I was editing the vocals for my human and AI series, and I thought I was doing a lot of things that might be nice tips to share. This one I actually only recently discovered because I wasn't interested in not using instant mode. So here's a little phrase, which is what we're normally used to hearing. Something's gotta change. Okay, so you get the AI vibrato throughout. Sometimes it's a bit crazy. And there are ways to control that. We've been over. In fact, I'm going to show you a couple other things today. First things first, if I turn off instant mode, not a lot changes here. But because I'm out of instant mode, you'll see what's going on here. We have these now on, on the timeline, which means that if I were to delete those, Something's gotta change. We're sounding a lot more synthy again, aren't we? So let me put this open. And if I select the longest word there, now these things, which I didn't think worked on the AI of voices, all work. So if I could in the depth off, depth off completely, straight line. Let's do them all. Something's gotta change. Now, what we can do here is design our vibrato with this control. So if I put the depth back up, I don't want it to go all the way up. So let's say we're there. And these controls here are, we have start, which starts the oscillation where you decide. And then left is how it fades in. Let me put the frequency up. So I got the frequency higher, and now you can see the fade a little more. See how it gradually goes in. And then you have a right one as well, so you can fade in and out. But singers tend to have more vibrato near the end of their breath. So I don't know. We probably don't need that at all. I'll put a little bit in that. And then it's all about the frequency. So let's audition. It's usually around five. Let's audition that. A change. That's not bad. Something's gotta change. Depth is the height of the oscillation. Frequency is how many times it oscillates. Left fade fades it in. Right fade fades it out. Start delays the start time of the effect. And as much as you try, see what I'm doing right now? I'm affecting all of them. This is not going to work for every note because some notes are short. And obviously you wouldn't necessarily have a vibrato there. Um, some words you don't want a vibrato at all. So you, are, you still have the ability to, to go in and change them individually to whatever you like. And if you wanted to mix this up with the AI, the only way to do it is to do this first and then export your WAV files, and then, you know, s save that project and rename it, and then switch to instant mode. Because when you switch to instant mode and the AI takes over, it changes the whole project. So, like, if you think, oh, I'll just make a copy and I'll leave the copy alone, uh-uh, they'll both get changed. In fact, I'll do it right now. So I duplicate the track. They're both the same. And then I go instant mode. Yes, convert the project, and you can see they've both been converted. Personally, I'd rather the AI. Something's gotta change. But occasionally it goes a little overboard, like on this word here. Let me just put the loop on. Change, change, change. So how do we control this? We've seen the pitch deviation where... We're drawing right on the waveform to smooth them out. That's kind of hard. I use a pen and tablet, so it's easier, but with a mouse, it's nigh impossible. Then there, these don't work at all once, once you're back in AI. So the only ch choice you have is the pitch factor in the generate takes, which actually is surprisingly useful because if I generate a take now and I go one way, you see how it's not quite as frantic at the end. And then if I go the other way, oh, look, this is quite usable. And in fact, I can blend it to somewhere in between 
change, change. I like that. So let's see if I can, if I copy that. They're similar, but they're not exactly the same. So what happens if I hit generate take again? So every time you hit it, you get a slight variance. So really, you could just put it to full expressive and just keep hitting generate takes to like the look of it. And the ones in between, you can delete. You don't need those anymore. So now take three was good on that. And take one was good on that. Let's see which one we prefer. Change, 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 change. Let's move that. Change. Shame. Now you hear the difference between the ch and these two, and that's because that's coming off that previous word. If I was to shorten that out of the way. Change, change. So they're pretty similar, but they're not as bad as they were on the default take. Change, change. And they're certainly better than using the synth engine with a perfectly even vibrato, which is synthesizer style and makes it sound like like vocaloid <laughs> oh let's take the snap off and this and here's a tip that sil silence appears whenever there's a tiny gap and if you click on it it stretches that one to fit to this and it's there's actually a parameter, uh, where is it? Remove short silences. You can set the length of where that will uh, work within. So I can make that a lot longer if I wanted to. So if, uh, if I had it on quarter notes, this would be further away and you would get a silence. And then if I click on it, boom, it stretches that one. Okay, so I've typed our first love in here and done the plus plus like this, but what are we going to hear? Our first. And the reason it does that is our is actually a diphthong, so it's our, our. Um, but, you know, when you're singing, especially if it's a, a fast lyric, it's more like R. So solution one would be to literally type the word R in there. A-R-E will do it. Our first love. That's the easy way. In fact, I'm going to split these words out individually. And it does it for us. It puts our in one note. And you can see where the diphthong happens, which is almost halfway through. Our first love. Our first love. So here's a situation where you would want to shorten up the ER portion. Let's see how that goes. Our first love. That's pretty good. Okay, the last tip is just navigation stuff. If you are to grab a chunk like this and move it around or say you know this, you're finished with this and you're not going to mess with it, um, you can quickly just select that and I'm going to use this merge into group, which is Alt and G. And now it works. Doesn't matter what you grab. They're all going to go together. Uh, when you're moving around, sometimes they jump and you're like, oh, geez, where, which, which line was I on? We can see where we were because I have another track. Let's get rid of that. <laughs> okay. So I got my group. Oh, uh, was I on? The F or the E here, I can't remember. If you hold control, it constrains it. So I'm moving up and down while I'm doing this, but it only slides side to side. So if I want to go up to from the F to the G, I hold down shift. And I can do that quite easily. If I if I don't, it's chances are it's gonna, you know, and especially if you're on a on a smaller division. Like that, it's going all over the place. So if I hold shift, constrains it to up and down. So that's a group. And if you want to ungroup it, you can use this uh, disband group, which is Alt D. 
And you may have seen the other menus in there, which is for the octave jumps. Something's gonna change. So if I know I want to go up an octave, I can just select what I want to go up. And I just go Control U, Control Up. Boom. And there you go. Something's gonna change. Wow. And Control D is back down. One other little thing you may not have noticed or tried or wondered about is when you're editing, say I wanted to edit this change here again. Say I wanted to do some pitch editing on that. If I select the word I want to edit, there's a keyboard shortcut, Alt and A, and that sets two anchor points on whatever is active here. In this case, it's pitch deviation. So if I grab, and all it's really doing is setting a point at the beginning and end, but not at the beginning and end of the clip, but actually where the pitch is. It's actually aware that the j is at that point and the ch is at that point. It doesn't work for everything though. As usual, there's, it depends. It depends which parameter, but pitch certainly works. Okay, hopefully some of those are useful. Uh, there's probably a lot more that'll come across in my travels, but for now, that's all. See you soon. <laughs>